All right, what is up my homies and welcome to day two gray gaming and today on another episode of settlement builds for noobs We are going to be going over one of my favorite settlements I think I've ever built and that is the Warwick homestead So the Warwick homestead is all the way down here in the far south left or south eastern corner of the map. This is probably the last settlement that you're going to locate, either this or the Murkwater construction site that is just over here. So the Warwick Homestead, if you are not aware, is only buildable after you've completed a certain quest line that is tied to the main storyline. So this is a late gameplay settlement build. You're not going to be able to unlock it beforehand. So just a little bit of the background. We are located on this little narrow spit on the end of a peninsula. And so there's not a lot of build real estate here. It's also compounded by the fact that there's an old sewage treatment plant that this is built around. And most of the structures here are not scrappable. In fact, I think almost all of the structures here are unscrappable. So this is kind of a higher challenge location to build at, but I absolutely loved how this one turned out. As with my other videos, just a quick look at the uh, caravan system. It is linked to my main network. Uh, this one connects to Tappington Boathouse just because it's closer than my primary hub, which is Starlight Drive-In, but then Tappington connects to Starlight Drive-In. This is a really fun location. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so there is a bit of a fog here. I'm not gonna use console commands like some other YouTubers do um, to show what this looks like when there's no negative weather. I'm just gonna hope that the fog clears up. So this is actually a hybrid construction. So first and foremost, there is a single wall to the structure. Because this is surrounded on three sides by water, I only constructed one wall. And if I had it all to do it over again, I would have put my wall a little closer to the settlement because this is directly on the edge of the settlement. And during attacks, enemies actually will spawn inside the wall. So it's entirely, um, well, it's entirely within the head canon of my little story that this wall actually does anything. So just something to keep in mind. Half of the attackers will spawn inside the wall, half outside. So. On the other side of this concrete wall, we do have a handy dandy power switch, which does allow this wall to be closed when we are in the middle of an attack or just looking to have a heightened level of security. So I absolutely love how this turned out. I've been using this on pretty much all of my more recent builds. So in addition, the wall itself does have a platform on top, which we'll go up top in a little bit, but also built into the wall is a clinic and a barber shop on top. So here in the clinic, we have just your basic amenities. We do have a faux raptor from the Vault 88 DLC. We do have a level three doctor and we have a chemistry station for them to build in. This is a little more organic than a lot of my other builds, so I do have some signage here. Normally I do really minimalist builds with almost no wall decorations aside from some LED lighting here and there. But here I decided to make this look a little more lived in than usual. Up top here we have our open air barber shop, so if you want to go to the barber and still hang out on the porch or deck, you're welcome to do that. I absolutely, this is great. I wish I had some sort of option like this but I don't. Anyway, moving here directly in front of the main gate, there is a large gun platform. And the reason for this was twofold. One, because enemies actually spawn inside the wall. So I needed something to provide an elevated shooting position that we could use to fend them off. And also because I like to put elevated artillery batteries. And so here I have the elevated artillery battery for two main guns. This also connects directly with the wall platform where I have all of my power armor on display. So I have five suits of T60 power armor. Um, I have just a huge surplus of T60 laying around because for this particular game, I sided against the Brotherhood of Steel. And so I tend to be able to loot T60 on a pretty regular basis. 
And so I also have all of these automated turrets, which if the enemy spawned farther away from the settlement would be far more effective than they really are. So really all these really do is increase my security rating and make it a little bit less likely that this location will be attacked. So moving around the site here, we move over our Brahmin paddock. All of the Brahmin died because, um, yeah, bad guys spawned inside the walls and killed them all. So when the Brahmin actually come back, I can set up a cage and actually trap a bunch. But I just haven't done that yet for this location. But there is a barbed wire fence or kind of hog wire fence. And then down here below in the corner, we have our reactor room. And I'll just do a quick tour of that. I also have this robot workbench up here. I didn't intend to build it. It was entirely a slip of the finger and it accidentally constructed. And rather than lose all those resources, because this is a rather expensive object to build, I just left it. So there is the ability to work on robots, but oh my gosh. Well, that was a problem. Okay, so I'm in my reactor room now. Here we have just a standard fusion reactor that generates 100 power. I build these in pretty much any one of my settlements that can actually take it. And we also have the workshop located right here, right next to the main unscrappable structure. And then we just exit out to our Brahmin paddock. I also have a cat cage. There's lots of cats all over the settlement. So here, the main structure that is completely unscrappable is the old sewage treatment plant. This is where the Warwicks live. And I really just turned this into a community barracks. And so a lot of these beds are already here and unscrappable. So I just threw in some extra beds for a lot of the other people throughout the settlement. I also threw in some additional couches, some diner chairs, some of these street lights. I wanted this to look kind of cobbled together, like something you actually would scrounge up out of the wasteland. And it turned out pretty darn good. Subway lighting, it's not dark, it's not dreary, but it still looks improvised. It still looks a lot more authentic than some of my other settlements, which looks a lot more modern or post, post, post apocalypse. All right. So stepping out here along this side, I also have a shower so people can actually shower. And I just, every time I set up showers, I just use the decom stations from the wasteland workshop. And so you can step in and get rid of any rads but functionally, it's just a shower. Also, we've got the privy or the latrine and you have to have the crescent moon door on it. And this is a lot cleaner than what you would normally expect, but I decided to include it anyway. Now, around the site here, I had built a gym earlier and then I decided I needed that structure for something else. So I just kind of threw all the exercise equipment out here um, I kind of wish I could get rid of this forklift, but unfortunately I can't. Just like all of this other stuff you see around, I can't scrap it without the use of extensive modding. I don't even think I can get rid of it with console commands. Um, but around here, you can kind of see there is technically a way around the wall. This is really shallow water here, and it does lead right up to this point. So any attackers, if they really wanted to find a way around, they could which is why I also have around these sewage tanks, large elevated platforms for more turrets. So even if someone did try and skirt around, they're still gonna be under fire pretty much the entire time. So moving around the side, we do kind of get to see that other than that little spit of land, there's not a whole lot that we have to worry about. We have Spectacle Island over here in the distance, way over there, we've got the castle, and nothing really south of this location. So we do have this location, which this is the arcade. I have arcades in almost every one of my locations. Close that door. There's a bit of a clipping issue there. So I do have some slot machines from the Vault 88 DLC. I also have some um, arcade cabinets from the Creation Club. I did get these for free. I've never bought Creation Club content before. I always just buy it when it goes on sale for free. And so all of this is 
to boost the happiness rating of my settlement. So instead of just having to build tons and tons of bars, I can just build these arcade cabinets and slot machines and they do the trick. All right, and so I'll come back to here in a little bit. So we also have this caravan trading post, which is unlocked by doing certain favors for Bunker Hill. I won't spread any spoilers. If you haven't figured out how to do that yet, you can always look it up on Wiki, how to unlock the caravan trading post. But this post makes it to where everyone stops off. I think the only settler who stops, or the only caravan who stops here by default is um, Cricket, the weapons merchant. But now you see we have Trash Can Carla here, who's just a general trader, and all of the Bunker Hill traders will show up here. And I do have some additional turrets that face out over the water because you can kind of see from here um, that there are some Mirelurk nests out there by that sunken boat. So just in case Mirelurks decide to come into the settlement, we have turrets that can defend against those. Um, rather than going with a water purifier, uh, which is kind of cruddy, kind of junky, I decided instead to go with water pumps. So we have a whole row of water pumps. This generates enough water for 40 settlers. This settlement has only half that. Go away, Brahmin. Um, here we have a giant gourd, which they basically just took the melon and turned it orange and really scaled it up. This is only available after you've performed a certain quest here, which happens to also be the same quest that lets you build here. And so, other than all of these perimeter objects, we have the main drag. And this is kind of what I call the promenade build. I really like this style of build. I really experimented and first developed it here at this settlement. And I loved it so much, I've started using it on a lot of my other settlements. But the promenade build is pretty basic. You have the market over here on the first level. And this is pretty much all of your settlers that aren't a doctor. So you've got armor, general trader, clothing, and weapons. You've also got a number of crafting stations related to that. So power armor, weapons, armor, etc. And we also have a clock. I don't know if that actually tracks the actual time. I don't think it does. I think that's just a broken clock. Uh, but again, some signage here and there to make this look just a little more authentic and a little more lived in. But again, I generally go with minimalist, minimalist builds just because otherwise it crashes my frame rate and it crashes everything. All right. So... In addition, we also have main living areas up here. So other than the community barracks, this is where I have most of the Warwicks living. So whereas everyone else in the settlement, they live in kind of an open birthing type of situation, each of the Warwicks just gets their own room. It's just a light and a bed, nothing super fancy, but a lot more private and a little more of a status symbol. So over here, we have the diner and a greenhouse on the second level. So the diner looks a lot more authentic. It has more signage. It looks a little more like what you would expect a wasteland diner to look like. Uh, we have the bar location here, a layer three bar, and we have a cooking station here. So if you wanna cook any food, you can do that. There's also a number of tables and we also have these nice guardrails. So this tends to look like a oceanfront restaurant, like if you had open porch dining. And I really like how it turned out. Um, the handrails don't snap together and look perfect with concrete. These are from the vault construction, they're their standard vault safety railing but they look a lot cleaner and a lot more engineered than the standard rusty guardrails that you see in other places. So I generally tend to use them wherever possible. And you also have the ability to step out here to where we have all the nice street lights. Hello, kitty. 
All right, and then finally, the greenhouse. So this is where all of the food is built. So Warwick Homestead, if you have never found the location, is really just a farm. And so all of this dirt area is where all the plants go. But here, I've actually moved it all to a greenhouse. And so we've got all this nice glass everywhere where people can look out over the ocean. You have a nice view, but you're also safe and off the ground. You're away from the water, so you don't have to deal with mire lurks. You don't have to deal with being kidnapped because you're in a nice enclosed area. And you're just generally safe. I usually go with upper deck gardens for that reason or elevated gardens whenever possible. And like all of my other settlements, I try and give people a varied diet. You're not just living off of one subsistence crop. So if, for whatever reason, a plague moved in, you wouldn't lose the entire crop. You would only lose one of the types of vegetables if you were, I mean, lucky. Also, the more varied your diet, usually the healthier you are. If you're eating too much of one thing, you end up with nutritional deficiencies. And so we've got corn, we've got gourds, we've got razor grain, which is kind of a mutated wheat. We've got carrots. We've got potatoes, which I guess is the mix between a potato and a tomato. And we've got melons and mute fruit, which I have no idea what a mute fruit is. Maybe it used to be like an apple or something. I don't know. But that is what we have here. So we've got pretty much everyone working, including good old Wally Warwick there and Roger Warwick. We've also got pretty much everyone else. So this is the entirety of my Warwick homestead. I really like this type of layout and how this worked out. This looks a little more authentic to the world we live in in Fallout 4. It still looks like a step in the right direction. Like so many of these post-apocalyptic settlements that you're seeing in Fallout games, they look cobbled together, they look highly improvised, but they never look like they're going anywhere. Like these settlements should have developed and society should be trying to rebuild. They shouldn't just be trying to survive in squalor. And so I think that this gets both of those points across. This looks like something that you would construct if you were improvising a settlement on a small spit of land on the edge of the ocean, but it also looks like a step in the right direction as far as being able to actually see social development. So that's my Warwick Homestead. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to drop them in the comments below. As always, please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, and this has been Real. I will see you all here next time on Grey Gaming.